So you managed to decorate your entrance, but now what? Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Sycamore, an island I just started recently. The restarting for this island as well as this entrance decorating is already up on my channel as a video. I will link both of those down below in case you want to catch up. And now the next step is to figure out how to continue this island. And that's pretty much where the problem is. Now I know I'm not the only one struggling with this because I have gotten comments before saying like, okay, I managed to do the entrance, but how do I continue? And how do we continue? Well, I have a list of things that I usually kind of ask myself and try to go through to figure this out. So I thought, let's go through that list today. Maybe it'll somewhat inspire you. And meanwhile, you know, I will also try and figure out what the heck I'm going to do with this island. So the very first thing I always do is I kind of look at the area that I've created and I somewhat take stock, if that makes sense. So in this case, my entrance actually only has one little open path thing that I can like continue with. So this one right here, here, right after this bridge because the other side of this build over here I kind of blocked off with some waterscaping there technically is a little path here but this will kind of be like an inefficient one if you have more than one option I would very highly suggest you choose one that you focus on for right now that way you can kind of reduce the choice overload and just kind of direct all of your decision power to one side next up I would kind of think about what is the main thing that you want to include next up this can be either your resident service if it's also as close as this one for me it could be another building like one of your villager houses it could be your own house it could be an area you want to build so let's say you want to maybe build like a library or you want to build like a a plant shop or a pottery station or pretty much anything you know just like a main focus point that you kind of want to have and this can also be a certain landscaping attraction I'm gonna say so like let's say you want to build a lake or you want to maybe have like a big land bridge or something just kind of decide on something that you want to be like your next main thing to walk towards to if that makes sense in my case I have my resident services right here which is technically already connected and then for some reason I was standing here and I had this like image of maybe having a house right here so I had already put down a little bit of pathing I have absolutely no idea if this is at all possible though and that's basically where the next thing comes into action because you need to make a decision about kind of where you want that main attraction to be this involves a decision like do you want that certain something to be on the ground level or do you want it to be a level higher up? Do you want it to be maybe pushed against cliffs and have like, you know, cliffs as a backdrop? Or do you want it to be surrounded by water? Once again, honestly, this is just about making a decision and then trying to stick with it and just trying it out. So just pick whatever sounds pretty to you. Anything that comes to mind here, you can also write down. So let's say you would like to have a villager home surrounded by water at some point, or you'd like to have a library put against a cliff at some point. Just write all these things down while you may not use them right now you might always want to come back to these things in the future in this step you should also think about the surroundings that you already have so like me for example here I do have a little bit of waterscaping that I could technically include but to be honest I also kind of feel like I don't have to I feel like it doesn't look super awkward so I might have more or less of a clean slate to work with there's not really any cliff that I need to tie in there is this cliff behind my resident services that obviously is not going to stay like this but from the front it's kind of fine and I I don't have to worry about it too much but if you do have something that you want to tie in definitely try and consider that and so with hopefully now like a somewhat of a main attraction the idea of kind of where you want to place these things it's kind of time to prepare the area so figure out if things that you want to do are even possible like this house right here I'm pretty sure I probably can't place it super close okay so I can't place it that close I could place it a tile further back though if you're unsure about something like this, I can also sometimes recommend using like taller items such as let's say a storefront to kind of imitate the building that you want to put there. If you're unsure about any building sizes, you can usually just Google them and then just search like ACNH museum size or ACNH like villager home size and you usually find some pretty good information on that. Okay, so in my case, I just want to test out what this house would look like. And also remember, no decision has to be final. So if you try it out and you decide that you don't really like it, you can always redo it again. So you know what? I'm just going to move a house here and I'm going to look at it and then decide if that's what I want it. 
Yeah, like in this case, I don't think I like that. Maybe that could work if there was more space in front of resin services. You could have like a cliff built up or something. Something I also like to do sometimes to figure out the position of certain things and just kind of where to place like a building is I like to actually take my map into consideration. And then I just kind of check where it might make sense to place a house. So in my case, I think I want to include the beach in whatever I built for this house. So. I might just move it a little bit further to the left and then the bottom as well. And then I'll just try and mark the new spot for the house. And I will use the map to kind of, you know, check back in if I like the spot or not. Maybe that is the better position. I'll have a little bit of space in front so I can, you know, build something here. I can probably do like a decent path leading to this, but I can also take a picture of this area by itself, not necessarily with the resident services building together. So that might be a little bit better. And once again, it's just about like making the decision and trying it out. So let's see what this would look like. Yeah, I think I feel a little bit better about this. Let's put it here instead. And here we go. And now, honestly, it's just continuing to prepare the area. And here you can ask yourself the same questions again. So, you know, where is my path coming from? Where do I want the path to lead? How do I want this to look? And sometimes I like to recreate kind of an entrance feeling in the sense that, you know, when you're creating your entrance, oftentimes you'll stand right here by your airport, by the pier, and this is where you will decorate it from. So for example, for me, my entrance was mainly built for this frame right here. And sometimes I like to try and do the very same thing with any area that I'm building. So I'll try to figure out a certain frame that I like and then stand there and then just kind of look at the area and think about how I would want to shape this. For this area here, I think this is a good frame, you know, with the house as well as resin services right there on the right hand side. And I also think something like this could make sense. So we see the house with the area to the left side and not necessarily necessarily the resident services there. And then I just kind of honestly stand here for a little bit and I try to just kind of picture how I would want this area to look. In my case, I do have this river here and I was just thinking, what if we try and connect it? So it's kind of a little winding river that goes kind of like here, circles past Antonio's house. And then one of the most important things for me is honestly just to get started. Oftentimes the anxiety about accidentally doing something that's not not so cute or whatever is kind of the thing that's holding me back the most. And so for me, it's just important. I kind of just go and do stuff, even if that means destroying tall weeds. I think that's not a bad start, to be honest. And now that I've done this river, I'm kind of like, oh, what if that leads into a little waterfall here? So I kind of want to build up a cliff there to build a waterfall. Okay, well, now I kind of like this with the waterfall. You know, I started a little cliff just for that one. Here is, however, the issue I'm running into now because my resident services is pretty much closed off to all sides. There is the big notice board here, and I just put up this cliff, and I need there to be a certain path somewhere. Now, you could kind of maybe squeeze past this, but I'm not the biggest fan of it. Let's try and bring the cliff more towards the front so we can we can end it a little bit sooner. Yeah, I think this works pretty much just as well. And I think by doing one thing, it always kind of influences my next step. So by having input this water escaping here, I've pretty much blocked off the path towards this side, but I have put a house there that I still need to tie in. And the only area right now where I could have my path lead is basically somewhere here. So now I need to think about how do I make a path from here connecting me to this house. I kind of think I want to have another bridge back here. So I need to connect the water escaping. Hmm, maybe that's not really possible in a cute way, okay. Maybe we just do this type of water escaping here. We'll make the path kind of go here. You'll go up to the incline at some point, walk around on top of this, and then the incline leading down will be basically here, and that will lead you to the house. I think this will be uh, like the delivery zone for all the produce. I was thinking about Boomer. He is a pilot and not like a ship captain, but maybe he just has like another seaplane. And then all of this area could basically be used for like a big delivery zone. We could do like another farmy bit probably somewhere on here. And then because this cliff might look very awkward, I also was thinking of connecting this here with the cliff right there. I will get started on this one and I will see you after a ton of dirt shoveling. 
And then once again, in the middle of landscaping, something else opens up, like, for example, the fact that this cliff over here could just be like this. And in that case, we kind of have a little bit of an opening here. And if I decide to actually get rid of some of the cliff here, that's where my path could continue. And you know what? I actually think that is kind of cute. And that also means we might just kind of close this area off or in general, just not do the cliff. As I was kind of working on it, it just kind of felt a little bit awkward in some spaces. And so I might not do it. A takeaway for this video, if we're not going to talk about anything else, is that even though a lot of people always assume that I have a very, very easy time building things, it also takes me a while. And I also tear things down again because I'm just not quite happy with the way that it turns out. And I overthink it and I redo it and I, you know, change my mind and stuff. But a lot of times, really what it comes down to in the end is just start with the landscaping, start with the waterscaping, put down the house that you want or start mapping out your area and then just kind kind of go step by step. It is a relatively narrow space, so trying to fit in a cliff was probably just not the smartest thing to start with. I like the curve here, so we'll stick with it. No idea what to do with the cliff, but that's gonna be something for another day. And then there will be a path kind of leading between these two cliffs and then circling basically kind of somewhat down. I think I might actually wanna place another house like right here that will have a farm in front of their house. And then I think there will be like an incline probably somewhere like here leading up on top of the cliff. And then we might even transform that into a land bridge. And then our, our path leading through here, I feel like might just stay on like the ground level for a little bit. And I'm thinking this could be like a big, big farm area. Maybe like the main farm, you know, that's like close to resident services somewhat. I do quite like the farm layout here. You know, we have our path circling through here. And then I also did just try and put in another house here with potentially a little farm hugging it on both sides. This way, I think our path will kind of nicely circle through here and kind of look very natural and cutesy. We still have like a little bit of space back here. So there's still a bit of room to work with since I did end up planning like a big, big area, but we have the start of a lot of things done now. And once again, I noticed that I have certain frames that I like to use to kind of look at certain areas. So this was the initial frame that we started with. I really like it. We've got the house, resident services, a little farm, the little winding river and a little cliff there. I think this is super cute. Then we also kind of have this frame with two houses, probably a little farm. And I'm pretty sure there will be some storage stuff here in front. And then once again, our like river and waterfall on the side here. And we will also have this frame here completely blocking out the other house, focusing on this house together with the farm and then probably just some trees and maybe like an incline in the back. And then, you know, to be honest, I do think we're going to have another frame kind of here hopefully that'll look cute as well as on this side but like before you know what we are going to focus only on the one side or like only one area after the other i'll be honest with you at the start of this video i honestly didn't quite know how this was going to continue but now having put all these like changes in and having like a vision for all of these little areas my area of focus right now is actually this this is now going to be bones so he has a little like wheat farm as well as uh, you know, a bunch of flukes roaming the area. And then obviously we do still have this entire section. I now invited Boomer and he will have all of that like delivery and, you know, shipping kind of thing. But even though that is the area closer to the entrance, I honestly feel even more confident wanting to build this for right now. So um, yeah, let's build out this farm. Since my pathing is connected here to resident services, I think I'll just continue connecting it from this point onwards all the way over to our house. Let's work on that first. I don't fully know how this incline will look, so I will just kind of pretend as though we're gonna make a path towards this, but I'm just gonna start it and then kind of finalize it once the incline is actually there. And then I think here close by the house, I just wanna use some planks. It's something I really like to do. So I think that would be kind of cute here. I do have to get the house built to be able to see the doorstep though. I think it should be kind of here though. And then I think I'll just end with this patch of dirt right here until I really know how this is gonna end. I think it's okay to just create snapshots of an area and then change it later on. Like I'm pretty sure, you know, the path will probably continue towards the house and maybe even also further down or there might be some more planks or we might change some of the pathing around. 
But for now, I think this is kind of good. All right, here is Bones House. Very cute, might be changed to look like a tiny bit more um, fall-like and also maybe a little bit more rustic. That door isn't necessarily my favorite, but you know what? This is really cute. Let's try that incline. Oh my God, look at that. We even did our path correctly. I feel like I like this already. I do think I wanna move it a tile further to the right-hand side. Let's try that. That way we will have enough room to put a tree behind that house and maybe even circle the path kind of past the house here to include the uh, peninsula as well. I think that is a good balance. And I think as a next step, I'm gonna be working on some tree placements. And here we are, just a couple of tree placements and a bunch of bigger items later. And honestly, this area is starting to take shape. Our chosen frame here, I think looks pretty good. We have a house. I added some storefronts to kind of extend the house. There's a little farm, we've got trees all around, and the only thing missing now are like details. So some flowers, some weeds, some shrubs, the usual stuff. You do see the incline peeking through back here, which is kind of nice. And as you can see, I have pretty much been ignoring everything else. So this is completely open. I have not continued this cliff over here either. This is still completely empty. So is this, and so is this. Also, can we chat about my cute villagers? Thank you. Just by getting started and kind of doing one step after the other, they all start kind of influencing each other. And then I start getting a bunch of ideas, especially when I have those chosen frames. So why don't we recap and then I will show you the finished results at the end of the video. Here is what I usually do when I need to kind of start working on a new area. First up, I will take stock of the area that I've already created and then I'll decide on a path or a direction with which I want to continue. Next up, I'll try to think about which building area or attraction I want to kind of focus on next. And then I think about the surroundings. So where exactly would I want this attraction to be? On the ground level, on a higher level? Does it require any specific land or waterscaping around it? And also, do I have any water or landscaping from the entrance or the area I built before this that I need to somewhat tie in. Then I will choose a spot from which I will build the area like the airport is for the entrance. And now for prepping the area, I'll stand in the spot that I just picked and try to just picture the finished thing. Where exactly does the building need to be? What do I need to build where? How does the path actually lead to our next building? And so on and so forth. Depending on the theme and storyline of your villagers and also of course the building or thing that you want to include, I also try and think about any further main decorations that I want. So what type of theme or like what type of main focus will this house have? And then honestly, piece by piece, fill the area in. Some things I do really want to mention again and stress is that number one, just get started. Because number two, everything can always be changed. No decision in Animal Crossing has to be the final call. If you end up not liking something and something feels awkward to you, you can always change it up. And number three, I would highly suggest to put certain things off for now. So let's just not care about that one path or also decide Side on like a border or end for your build. Pretty much anything to try and reduce the overwhelm. Little tip on the side, if it helps you, maybe actually fence off the area that you want to focus on and make it a rule that you cannot decorate anything outside of that area. And that brings us to this point. Admittedly, you know, it is a bit messy sometimes and it does take a while to figure things out, but I'm going to be honest, that is pretty much my actual Animal Crossing progress. It's a lot of like running around, thinking about the area, trying to picture it lots and lots of question marks and then I just kind of get started at some point and then from there it usually starts snowballing and I end up with a somewhat finished result that I'm kind of happy with. And I want to show you that for this area. So as you know, we ended up actually focusing on this area over here instead of what we initially thought, just because it kind of happened to be that way due to like our pathing, etc. And I put in Bones House. I also do have the DLC, so I was able to customize the house. Um, and so now I feel like this is fully kind of, uh, yeah, summarizing the colors of this island. I think it looks very cute. I'm very happy with the little flute farm um, and the house and kind of the pathing and all the flowers and stuff. And ever since I did this, I have also started somewhat continuing in other areas. I did organize all of my flowers and put them to a separate beach so I can get started on this area, which I actually think will be the next video about this island. I have also continued a tiny bit of the landscaping over here, but that's something to worry about some other time. 
Um, and then just yesterday on stream, I focused on this little flower farm right here, which basically continues the entire theme from the entrance. So I kind of just filled in the spots that were still open. And I also did this pumpkin display because I do believe that the area behind resident services will end up being a pumpkin patch. And so from one area to the next, I kind of made more and more progress. And I have to say, I'm quite happy with it. I'm really, really enjoying working on this island and I kind of can't wait to continue, to be honest. Also, to those of you who are interested, this is my current villager lineup. Um, thank you all so, so much for all of your amazing recommendations, by the way. I really appreciate it. Currently, the ones I still definitely want to get out are Leopold, Kashmir, and Greta. All the others I pretty much like. I'll see how I kind of vibe with them. Um, on stream yesterday, we kind of came up with the idea of having a little squirrel neighborhood with Hazel, Pecan, and and Poppy, which I think would be super cute. So we'll see what other cuties find some space here on Sycamore. But yeah, for now, this is the progress. I'm kind of happy with it. And I hope you enjoyed the video and that even though sometimes it may have been a little bit messy, that you maybe were still able to take something away from it. Like I said, I can't wait to continue working on this. So definitely make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss the next update and video on this island. And then I hope you all have an amazing time until I see you in my next video. Bye everyone.